Way back in 1982, home computers were becoming really popular, and they came in all sorts of shapes, sizes and colours, although most were beige. And software was in demand, mostly from teenagers who wanted to play games. You could save your pocket money and buy a commercial game on cassette, or buy your favourite computer mag and type in a programme from a listing. And this was really popular. There were loads of monthly computer mags filled with listings that promised fantasy action adventures in the future. Of course, you soon learned that a basic program you could type in an hour wasn't going to provide the arcade thrills that you may have expected. But the whole process was fun. The typing in, the not knowing what the result would be like, the feeling that you were getting the computer to do something rather than just waiting for a program to load from tape. There were books too. So when I found computer space games on a well-known online auction site, I was very happy indeed. 8-bit computers and an Usborne book together at last. I loved Usborne books when I was a kid. They had a cheeky cartoon style that made non-fiction interesting. I had books on camping, how to be a spy, all sorts. This book promises games programs for your micro. Published in 1982, it costs £1.99 and has listings for ZX Spectrum, ZX81, BBC, TRS-80, Apple, Vic and Pet. Inside it explains some of the differences between these computers and how some lines of code need to be changed for your machine. It also explains how to type in, debug and experiment with the programs. In the back, there's a section that goes into more detail of how to write your own programs in BASIC with a scattering of cartoons that help visualise some of the concepts. It's not a big intimidating book, the whole thing is less than 50 pages. Inside there are 13 games, 12 of them use common code with a few lines highlighted because they need changing for your particular computer. But one game, Touchdown, has a different version for each computer because it, quote, uses graphics. So I think that's the one for me to try. First of all, I'm going to use my Sinclair ZX Spectrum, a small rubber keyed computer that was incredibly popular in the UK in the early 80s. You'll see I have an HDMI adapter hanging out the back, which makes using a Spectrum on a modern display much easier. Now the Spectrum expects you to input programs a bit like a calculator. Each key has basic keywords and character symbols attached to it. By context and a combination of control keys, you get to the required function. But if you're not used to it, things can get tricky. After a while I start to get the hang of it, but it takes me nearly an hour to type in a relatively small program. When I first run it, I get an error. so it's back to the book to find out what I've mistyped. Eventually I get the code done. And it works. But it's not exactly all action. The idea is that you control the thrust so the spaceship lands gently. If you land too hard, then everyone dies. If you run out of fuel, then everyone dies. And if you go off into space, well, everyone dies. Now I'm going to try a version for the Commodore VIC-20, another very popular home computer and the predecessor to the most popular home computer of the 8-bit era, the Commodore 64. The VIC has a proper keyboard that expects you to type in commands a character at a time, and for a modern developer that feels much more natural. It also means that I can type the program in much faster than I could on the Spectrum. The only keyboard issue I had was that pressing shift to get a plus symbol gave me a very similar looking graphic symbol. Overall though, the biggest problem with the VIC is the 22 column display which results in huge text on the screen and not much of it, so programs are really difficult to read. Amazingly though, I appear to have it running first time. We can see it looks quite different to the Spectrum version as it relies on character based graphics rather than drawing lines. It still runs really slowly and if anything gives less feedback than the Spectrum version. So inevitably, everyone dies. Last is the BBC Micro. 
Mostly seen in schools and wealthy middle class households in the UK, it costs more than the other two put together. Now if you've seen my other videos you might think I'm an Acorn fan so I'm bound to say it's better than the Vic and the Speccy and you'd be right. It has a proper keyboard and an 80 column display so I can see what I'm doing. It really does make the others feel like toys but it did cost much more back in the day so it should. The final result looks good too. It even has some colour effects. And this is the only version I've not had to speed up in the edit. Having said that, the game itself is still not hugely exciting to play, but you do get a bit more feedback on the beep. So what have we learnt today? Well, it'd be easy to conclude that basic programs you type from a book are not very exciting. And if you're expecting this, then that's true. But are you really expecting that from a 100 line interpreted basic program? I think here the journey is more important than the destination. The enjoyment comes from making the computer do something, instruction by instruction. I've had a great time making this video. I'm Andy Fandango, I hope you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe.